This is gonna be a long way. I've never attempted to do anything like this before. If you could describe to people what the Nullarbor is like, I mean, it is just so empty and vast. And I've only seen about, I don't know, 200 kilometers of it so far. So yeah, this is gonna be a long way. Welcome to episode 3 of my four-part series of bicycle touring across Australia. In this episode, you'll join me cycling across the Nullarbor. The Nullarbor starts in the town of Sejuna in South Australia, and the road stretches 1,200 kilometers to Norseman in Western Australia. We'll be continuing from where I left off at Port Augusta, and I'll list off the roadhouse and towns that we'll be passing by in this episode. The township of Wyala, Cowell, Lock, Streaky Bay, Sejuna, Penong, Yalata, which is now closed, the Nullarbor Roadhouse, Border Village, Eucala, Cocklebiddy, Kaiguna, Baladonia, and in the next episode we'll be continuing from Baladonia heading over to Perth. For this trip, I also rode for charity to raise awareness for World Bicycle Relief, where they donate bicycles to kids and families in Africa and other developing countries. If you'd like to support them, please head over to www.uk.virginmoneygiving.com slash the one good road. And without further ado, let's begin. So the plan is to head out of Port Augusta today. I'll explain some stuff later when we're on the road. So we're going to take a, a nice little back road which goes out of Port Augusta. It's really pretty out here. It reminds me of California. I like that. It's going to get dry, boy. It's going to get dry. I've seen how big the road trains are now. I'll try and get some footage later, but there are three carriages long. Every day, I start to realize how big this country is. People, I don't think they realize how fast cars are. Because when you see one pass you, you kind of look at it, and you follow it a little bit with your eyes. But when you look straight across the road... You see what I mean? So I'm at the bike shop. New pedal cycles, Wyella. And then there's the whole town here. New tires is what we're looking for. So today is July the 9th, I think. I'm just heading to the bike shop one last time to see what I can do about this wheel. I thought I'd show you the coast. This is Wyala, the blue water is really nice down there. And the Australian flag, Aboriginal flag. So uh, I'm not really feeling so well at the moment. I'm kind of realizing how big the distances are out here. Between Cowell and here, and at Wyala, it's 100 k's of just nothing. It's probably gonna be my longest distance without a gas station. God, oh, that guy in the bike shop, I mean, he's the last guy for 1,900 kilometers who can use a bike mechanic. It's actually kind of warm. It's amazing. For winter, it's warm. So, I've got about 60 k's to go. Just climbing up a hill, which is quite rare for Australia.
welcome to Kawel. Please pay your camping fees here. Five dollars per night. Must have a fully self-contained toilet facility unless camping in an area with toilet facilities. So does that mean bikes are allowed to camp for free? How does that work? Anyway, I found a, a decent pub against the commercial hotel one again. Don't know if they're the same, but they've got the same name. It's only 40 bucks. But the campground was like I don't know, 20, 30 bucks, which seemed a bit strange to me. So for an extra $15, you get a room. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize how sparse it is out here. And it's gonna get even more sparse. This is the Western Commercial Hotel. I would recommend it, it's nice in there. They've got the pub and, uh, you know, it just, it's kind of chilly out this, outside this morning. It is cold this morning. <laughs> Better get cycling, warm myself up. So I've downloaded new music yesterday. So, um, oh, every time I start the bloody camera, I say so. God damn it, I'm sorry. Um, I'm currently riding towards a town called Cleve, and then we're going to Lock. so focused on something I don't pay attention I almost just left the GoPro here god damn these roads are so long it's ridiculous Just trying to wrap my head around how big this country is still. Still can't wrap my head around it at all. I'm in this small little town called Lock. Um, it is so small. There's a shop down there, I'm just gonna grab something to drink. And uh, I just paid for $12 for a campground. Sweet sugary goodness. So, me being the lucky shit that I am, I had a chat with the person who's sort of looking after this campground, and I saw that there was a, a cabin, which I'll show you in a minute, and um, basically I'm getting it for the same price as camping, which is pretty sweet. Thank you, Amanda. You're awesome. Just really happy to be not having to pick up a tent. That's so cool. So, it's really pretty cold this morning. That's the problem with waking up early in, in this time of their season. Being the idiot that I am, I may have slipped in the shower last night. Yeah, so we'll be making a right here. Oh, there's the sign. Lock welcomes you. That's a nice shot. I'm glad I'm not taking the highway because um, this road is really, really quiet. There's just no traffic on here, almost none. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cuántos años? Sí, sí. Oh, my balls. It's about 20 kilometers long. 
but the thing is, if I take the sealed way, it's 50 kilometers. So, I'm back at the main road. My target for today, it's probably not gonna be able to get there, but I'll get to my other plan B. Um, the wind started to pick up a little bit. It's not much, you can hardly even see it or hear it, but it's it's just there and it's it's like Hello everybody! Your old friend Dos Rodania here. Today I'm riding into the sun. It's a bit nutty because I'll be riding in the sunset for maybe another 30 minutes. I got some stars. Beautiful haze in the sky. Behind me, it's completely dark at night. So, I'm gonna try and find a pub, basically, is the plan. It's totally night time right now. Bloody hell. I made it. Made it. 190 kilometers. The sun was already setting at like. 5.30, which is not bad actually, which is a little bit insane to even think of that I've came this far and it's just the beginning of halfway, <laughs> it's like, you mean you, you look at a map of how far I just did today and it's, it's nothing. Good morning everybody. Um, it is July the 12th, I have a bit of a cold. The distant, the stuff in between, there isn't anything. And it is beautiful to experience that. It brings back memories in the States where I'd have a long road with nothing for a very long time. So I remember in Arizona and parts of New Mexico and then Texas, those were pretty open and sparse. And here it's it's even it's even bigger distances. And it's pretty flat in some ways. The highest elevation I've done in Australia is only about a thousand meters above sea level. Good morning, Vietnam. Just kidding. This is not Vietnam. But that's the coast. So here we are on this lonesome road it's just huge distances that's the 80k sign there's quite a few ants out here I don't know if you can see them there's quite a few but these ones are small so it's not a big deal I just wanted to mention though that one of the best meals I think that you can have out here if you want a quick simple thing peanut butter and a piece of black bread South Australia, the law is you're allowed two carriages on certain roads, and then once you're on a highway, it's three carriages. It depends on the road. Basically, the more straight the road is, the more carriages they can have. I mean, I know I've said it a million times, but I really can't just wrap my head around how big this country is. I mean, if you look at that, okay, and then you look at this. It's been like that for 30 kilometers or something. But it hasn't changed at all. Like it's been exactly the same. The ants are still here, 30 kilometers away. The roads, the, the dirt, the trees, the farmland. It's just, I mean, people in Texas said you might feel that Texas is a bit like a treadmill when you cycle it. But it's even crazier out here. Guys, you see that? That's another spoke. It just broke right now. Again, it was on the back wheel, right around the drivetrain side. 
So you probably can't see the difference, but I'm now on the air highway. This is quite a famous road, really. That was a huge detour. I just did like 600 k's almost around the highway. So I got a pretty good view here. Doesn't that look awesome? Problem is, I now need to figure out how to uh, fix that bloody wheel. So I've got a bit of a bad throat at the moment. Um, I'm just gonna go into town and pick up some food. Staying at this uh, guy's place. So I have to buy, ride the bike pretty lightly. Because, um, basically, the spokes were, there's two spokes which are broken. I talked to Reed. And long story short, they're really kind enough to help me out and send me a new set of wheels. Not sponsored, but we got M&M's. And life is good. Isn't that amazing, that view? I love the climate out here. It's dry. Today's brilliant weather. It's a bit annoying. I really wish I had um, the wheel fixed. Here we are, out in uh, Brennan's conservatory class. Conservatory. Don't know the word for it. Veranda. Uh, veranda. And uh, taking apart the old wheels to replace them for the new. So the new ones are. A mountain bike version still from Alex rims and I think these spokes are gonna be a little bit stronger is the idea um, go with these little ones here <laughs> that's really loose premium bicycle wheels hand trued in Australia spokes DT Swiss DT Swiss are good we are almost there, we've almost succeeded. So it's good. It's good that they sent it to me. The um, the spokes look way stronger. Got the, the wheels on, which is really good. Um, huge thanks to Reed Cycles sending me out those wheels and Brandon for helping me out and hosting me. Um, then I've got a whole a whole little room out here for myself, which has been really nice. We're gonna have to start off with bad weather, which is a bit annoying. It says it's gonna rain. I'll show you the forecast. You can see there it says about 4 mil at 12 o'clock roughly. It's just gonna be raining, raining all day. I have been fortunate enough to stay at friend's parents' place. Um, Oh god, just wake it up. That's a road train. They're allowed three carriages on here. It's incredible. I'm so glad to be back riding again now on the road. But it's a long road ahead. This road is like cycling from uh, top to bottom of France. It's about the same, the same distance. Hey guys, is it just me? What do you think it's gonna rain? There's an oversized vehicle coming up. I thought I'd just video it and show you. I'm getting off the road. It's so slippery. Look at the turbines, the little uh, wind turbine thingies here. here. <laughs> yeah, it's Victor though, right? Victor, right? Victor, yeah. yeah.
Jonah's back over there. And this is your setup here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The this kid trailer. trailer. Yeah. I don't recommend this. Oh, your raining pants go like over your shoes? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> My raining pants go here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd recommend these. These are from uh, Decathlon. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, Super cool. cheap. They're like 25 bucks I've had for two years. And I'm still wow. dry. Problem is, on all of my uh, videos, people have been saying like, oh, you should change this and this and this. And everyone's got their own opinion, you know. Yeah, and in the end of the day, we're riding bikes, so... <laughs> it's, no, you know. it's just the road and the bike. Yeah, exactly. The scenery hasn't changed at all. It's all this red, sort of orangey looking ground again, and gum trees. I've seen three cyclists already. Two last night, which you already saw footage of, and another one I just had a chat to this morning. And it's interesting because each of them, both of them had different um, ways of touring, you know, everyone does. I found myself, I feel like I'm in between those two people I just met because I'm on a budget and I'm very low on money just like that the uh, Jonah and I, I totally get his situation but I wouldn't be carrying that many days of food. I don't mind spending extra money at a, at a roadhouse just so that I don't have to carry 10 days of food. I think his name's Glenn. Um, he had a very similar setup to me, it was bike packing. I think he was carrying maybe half the weight it kind of looked like, I don't know. His bike looked much nicer, I have to admit. These guys that I met this morning and yesterday, they mentioned about how you can get tendonitis by straining your tendons. And I think that I'm getting a form, or I probably have tendonitis already, uh, which I didn't really understand until now but basically because I've been straining out my tendon it's I mean it's not that bad like you you can live with it I've heard you can still like you know I've ridden 300 kilometers once where I didn't do anything about the pain I had just my Achilles heel burning all day this is an underru roadhouse Fairly basic. Road trip. Anyway, let's go and have a look at this. Hi there. Curious how much the snipper bars are. 340 each. 340 each. So how much are one of these then? I don't know. I think you could probably get by with it, but you have to everyone's right, you have to stock up on food before you head out because they are quite a lot. From here to the next gas station, it's 145 kilometers um, to Nandaru. No, sorry, we're in Nandaru, Nullarbor. I'm glad those guys suggested to me to buy a, a bag of rolled oats, because I can eat that in the evening. This guy's in the Toyota, just over there. Put me some beans. But that's really awesome. No idea what their names are or anything, it's just they bought me a can of beans. This is proving to be a little tricky. Uh, I should have gone up the, the dirt track, but it was another... This is a shortcut. I've got no cell phone coverage. I'm, I'm in an area with nothing. And that's what you do when you have a farm. You just accumulate stuff over time. Because how the hell am I supposed to reach those doors? <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't wrap my head around how sparse it is out here. It's, it's really weird. Here's where I slept last night. That's what I meant to say. Um, Brennan's little shack out here, placed one of those out and slept great. Now I'm gonna pack up. Good morning everybody. I think it's July the 1st. I lost track of the days again. It's 
pretty cold at the moment. There's me. And this is the... I don't know what you call this. This is the air highway towards Yalata. I've got a fresh day, a fresh new start, which is nice. So hopefully the camera is capturing this. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the dingo fence. So there's a yellow sign down there. I won't bother going to read it, but I'm pretty sure this must be the dingo fence. Because the, ca the cattle grid's on the main road, which is really weird. I've never seen that before. And it's really long and huge. <laughs> out here which is beautiful but scary at the same time because there isn't anything out here it's just trees and, and your road and that's it just rolled into the Yalata uh, roadhouse which is definitely closed I uh, just thought I'd I mean I already knew this but I just thought I'd point that out again for anyone <clears throat> Look at that, 92 kilometers, camels, kangaroos, and wombats, but camels in Australia? Strange place, isn't it? So look at this sign, Nullarbor Roadhouse, or the beginning of the Nullarbor, 91, Border Village, 275, Norseman, 1000, 1000. This is going to be a long way. I've never attempted to do anything like this before. I wish you could describe to people what the Nullarbor is like. I mean, it is just so empty and vast. When the trucks go by, they have a really big gust of wind around them. Um, so this, this couple, I don't know their names, but they just pulled over on the side of the road and they gave me some water, which was great. A road train which came by and uh, it bent the shifter. Now, I bent it back. Hopefully my gears are still fine. I have no idea yet. I can't express to you how scary that is. Like, I mean, you can get a lift from someone, I know, but in terms of the riding, you, you, are, you are on your own. And I just li lean my, my bike up to take a photo of the sign. The Nullarbor plane, because I was really happy about it. And then I just let the bike fall. It's an idiot. Someone spelt Southern Ocean. They might want to maybe reprint that. Okay, so look at these prices, okay? Five dollars, can of beans, okay? Spaghetti, five sixty, okay? That's eight dollars. Two hundred and eighty grand. Three fifty for that. Which are the snicker bars? They like three fifty. Shifter's kind of worrying me a little bit, but you know, as long as it stays on there, it should be okay. This can of beans is five Aussie dollars. This Fanta was four fifty dollars. And then these cookies were the most expensive. One of those bags is seven fifty, so that's fifteen dollars for both of those cookie bags. Don't think I caught that, but it said Norseman nine hundred and nine kilometers. And this road is just this for ages and ages and ages. It's pretty insane. Joseph, how long have you been on the road? 
Uh, about three and a half years or so. Um, I started in uh, Sydney though about a, two months ago. What about you? Uh, five months. I just come back from South America. Okay. I did, like, um, went the wrong way, headwinds, every <laughs> single direction. Yeah. And they were gnarly. Yeah. Um, uh, heading towards Perth, I'd like to go to Esperance, that way. Uh, someone told me about this. This is a, the road is used as a, a runway sometimes. Look at this. Five hundred meters off the highway, but uh, Check this out. Isn't that just staggering? Really good. It's only about 90 meters or so, or 100 meters or so max up to the cliffs but it's it's gorgeous out here i'm gonna grab a few photos have something to eat and just continue i don't know where i'm gonna end up tonight here i am in the middle of nowhere this is literally the middle of nowhere apart from that road that's it there's nothing else connecting me to civilization other than that road crudely um, put the tent up like that and um, I don't know, I just, uh, I'm alone out here. July the 23rd today. Um, I am 56 kilometers, slightly less than that, from uh, the border of uh, Western Australia. Uh, excuse me. I'm at the 45k marker. I tell you, this is not easy. Them, but they filmed me and I, I don't know whether I'll ever see the footage but I was just talking and he was filming me so yeah I look kind of nice I don't know so there's the end of a very successful day I think I did not expect to get this far even considering the fact of all the wind so I can charge my stuff my bikes in here I can get a good night's sleep have a shower 
Um, showers still cost a dollar, by the way. Just most roadhouses are doing that mostly. So let's have a look at the winds. There you go. Look how f***ing horrible that is. Excuse my language. So price time. Five dollars. Four fifty. Four fifty. Four fifty. These are the cheapest chocolate things you can probably get for the gram. And then Fanta three eighty. So. Yeah, you, you should definitely, if you see can of beans, buy it. Like, just buy all of them. outside of a place called Madbilla. Mad it's weird in your head it sounds like it makes sense but out loud it sounds weird anyway. I'm just noticing how dehydrated my body gets out here and it's just something I wanted to mention on camera that you really need to look after having enough water. There's nothing in between here to the next place so that's a hundred kilometers. So the next place is there. Boop. Six hours. Eesh. I don't see why they don't sell canned food like beans. It seems like a very easy, simple thing. Not all this fresh crap, you know, which is more expensive. The next roadhouse, it's about 100 k's from here. And I've got a, a headwind, which is pretty horrible. But the bad news is my, uh, my back tire, it's failing. And what I'll do is I'll swap the front one to the back because it, it's going really well. So it's the sunset right now. And we still got 50 damn kilometers to go. 40k to go. Two hours. Two hours I got a ride. Sejuna, 676 kilometers, Port Augusta, 1,144. There we go. It's Maybe there's something there. Fraser, 97. Right. Um, gotta have some breakfast now. A little bit more breakfast. Um, pretty shitty start to the day because I just spent the last, I don't know how long, trying to suss out the problem with the tire. I put too much pressure, this is the old one, okay, and I'm going to keep it as a spare because the tube should be fine, but basically it was knotted, it was twisted in in the, the process of me pumping it up. Time for some beans. Yeah, yeah. So you won't believe it, guys. I'm climbing a hill. And look at that sign. Norseman, 530. Kilometers! Did I mention I'm still climbing? Anyway, I'm climbing up this hill at embarrassing speed right now, so I'll speak to you later, okay? Oh. That's a 
sad reality. I don't know if I want to show footage of that, but there are a lot of dead animals on the side of the road. It's a bit sad. So, I'm about 18 kilometers outside of uh, Cockle Biddy. I'm uh, enjoying this very low wind. So, we're heading to the next roadhouse this morning, Kaiguna. Kaiguna's Roadhouse sits at the beginning of the 90 mile straight, which is a straight road of 150 kilometers roughly. So we just arrived. But if you're at this uh, Kaiguna place, the guy is really supportive for cyclists, so he gave me this bottle of water. And, and he gave me 20 bucks, which is amazing. Don't know the guy's name, but she's just really cool. I can't believe I'm actually on this road. Um, look at this sign. Well, I'll, I'll show you some photos of the 90 mile straight sign. Baladonia. This is another 181 kilometer stretch. No gas stations in between. The wind's died down a little bit, which is very helpful. I'm on the 90 mile straight, which is quite impressive. Right where I am is roughly 100 kilometers to each place now, which is good. The shoulders disappeared on the 90 mile straight for some reason. I don't know why. So, I'm at the Baxter rest area, open 24 hours. Uh, it's got a toilet and a dumping facility. There's people. So hopefully, you know, I'm gonna feel a little bit more comfortable being out here. So, Just every day, huge distances. <laughs> it's just crazy. I never get, give myself a break. I'm a bit speechless, Stuart. Thank you for uh, helping me out. There we can help. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just stopped like. 10 k's out of, out of this whatever you call this yeah. place um, and I just thought like what the hell am I going to do I hope there's people out here <laughs> god I just can't well, stand not having anyone around this is what we call a free camp sounds amazing oh okay it's just that you didn't like the coriander so I thought I'd just make oh, unless fine. there was some other spice that you no that's why I don't there's, like coriander yeah, it's just fine there's spice in it well it's it's not it's soy uh, it's um honey Soy, you know, soy. Um, but, but that's just soy. Like soy your sauce. Beans. Sauce, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah, great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, I love it. That's fine. Yeah. So good morning, everybody. Uh, it is July something. I don't know the time actually. We've got 115 kilometers to go to Baladonia. Um, I've noticed that my tire is already bulging again, so I might have to look at that this evening. I can't look at it now. So huge thanks to Stuart and Sandra for hosting me, kind of. Um, so I, I was at the, the caravan park and um, they just said, uh, well, I had a chat with them, said I, you know, I was low on water. And um, they said, yeah, we can come and fill it up. And uh, one thing led to another, I was having dinner with them. And it's about 80 kilometers to the end of the 90 mile straight. Uh, huge thanks to them giving me breakfast, Stuart and Sandra. That was really, really kind of them. Or I've been getting this cracking sort of thing along my finger. Today it's really damp, but when it gets really dry, my fingers get really, cracky and dry. 20 k's more of the 90 mile straight here. And it's just 
basically now it's, it's turning into just trees. So the, the road is actually not as challenging as you would think. Um, it's just a really straight long road. That's it. I can't believe that Ed Pratt and Mark Beaumont and all these other cyclists who I've seen blogs about, I'm actually standing right where they've stood, you know? What's that other guy? Cycling Maven? He, he took a video with, with some friends of his right here. He live streamed actually along this road. We are at Baladonia, which means we've only got one station left. Technically, it's a, this is already the last roadhouse, but there's a station in between here and Norseman. Wow, this one is so much more fancier. This feels like the Nullable Roadhouse. Look at this. Anyway, yeah, good day. Good, good kilometers, and now taking a rest. Let's do it all over again.